Hello there, bookworms. Hope you're reading well. So I wanted to have a, a review a book uh, that I thought was quite interesting called The Appearance of Power. How Masculinity is Expressed Through Aesthetics by somebody called Tanner Guzzi. So um, I'll read the blurb on the back. Throughout time and across all cultures, men have used appearance, clothing and grooming as ways to signal masculinity. Some displays have been as overt as wearing the scalps of conquered foes and others have been a subtle tying a tie in a particular knot. The appearance of power takes the underlying principles of how and why masculinity is expressed through aesthetics, helping you to formulate a game plan by which you can improve your own life through these same strategies. And Tanner Guzzi is a chap here at the back wearing a leather jacket. He's an author, a coach, husband and father. And he does have a, a website where he talks about, um, you know, styles of clothing. Um, so, um, what did I think of it? Um, so, it, it's not basically a book about, you know, what to wear or how to wear it, but it's just giving you broad principles of things. So, he talks about masculinity not as a good or a bad thing. So we need about toxic masculinity. He just says it's an amoral thing. It's just what men are. So he does talk about the fact that masculinity is to do with certain characteristics. And he describes them as courage, strength, mastery and honour. And these are qualities of, mas these are masculine traits as opposed to feminine qualities of fertility. Which he says are accentuated by the hourglass figure. And with men, it tends to be with a tapering V so that the shoulders tend to always be uh, broader than the waist, which should be small. Um, <laughs> basically, he says that, look, we all have a relationship with clothing. Men have a relationship with clothing and there is a communication through our clothing. And he says that if you think that I don't, ha I don't care about what I wear, try w going up or down in terms of clothing and you find it very difficult because you are communicating something. That's the idea that he says. Um, um, the, he, um, I mean, that, that I thought was quite an obvious point uh, about communication, but you know, um, he, he talks about something called enclothed cognition, which are things that are, you know, expressed through the clothing, uh, which, you know, makes sense. Uh, for example, if you're a, in martial arts, you have a you have a black belt and that clo uh, signals type of mastery. And, um, you know, these are very conscious signals. If you're a, a surgeon, you're wearing surgeon's clothes. Although I think that's a necessity as well. But also he talks about the white coat, which is very obvious you know you don't need to have a white coat but it signals something and it has real effects on other people in terms of placebo uh, it can raise people's blood pressure but it also sets you apart in that this is your work this is some you, you are somebody who uh, now has a certain type of skills um he, he you can see on the front cover there's a guy with a wig and that was quite interesting he said um uh, you know, back in the, whenever it was, the 17th century, 16th, 18th century, uh, there was a lot of syphilis and people would go bald. So people would start wearing wigs. And as time went on, the bigger the wig, the greater the stature of the person. And so that's where the idea of the big wigs come. Somebody's, you know, big wigs, that's the idea where it came from. It was basically to hide syphilitic baldness. But you can see where even today, the, there's the idea of the um, you know people in court with their wigs and that still is contained there and it's still there the graduation robe the 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 the, uh, the sort of square cap that is put on people again signifying the idea that this person is a scholar and he's reached a certain type of um, mastery and knowledge uh, interestingly enough, the, the, the square mortar board came from uh, uh, Middle Eastern areas where when people learned the Quran, they were, do they, you know, they were touched with the Quran, which is a book. And it still has even the, the mortar board 
still has a little kind of tassel, which is almost like the Quran, which is like the, the like a bookmark. So again, these express a certain thing, although I don't think that's just, although it's very masculine, women will wear it as well. So I'm not quite sure what he's meaning there. Um, he, there was a few interesting points he was saying. Um, he's saying, look, if, if dress and your clothing is a communication, why limit yourself to just grunts? You don't just say, me want food. You know, you, you talk about it in many other ways. So he goes, why not apply that to uh, f uh, to, to the way you dress? Um, he also said that sometimes um, men uh, don't want to, they, they, they confuse being a good man with just a, a man and that masculinity is amoral. And they say often we, 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 we don't want to stand out which is why people wear certain types of clothing. And we often delegate this to women who have a certain notion of what to wear because it looks pretty. So he's actually suggesting that men stop allowing, uh, shouldn't maybe as much allow women to dress them, but actually dress themselves because they will wear different types of clothing. And that, that may explain a sort of feminization of men not quite sure about that he also talks about things like archetypes so archetypes are things like um there's the rugged male the rakish male and the refined male the rugged is the kind of outdoor type you know you know rugged type uh, and what kind of clothes that they might prefer rakish is referring to pirates and when they have the half mast they would pirates would have it at an angle this was rakish, so they were slightly outside of the norm, their own men, but and this was also seen as sort of masculine and refined as somebody who's wants to live up to uh, not just stereotypes but also um, uh, you know um, established uh, statuses of power. Um, so there was three types that he talked about, uh, and he also talked about tribe and uh, tribe and something else, tribe and. Um, was it tribe and talent? I think it was. Um, yeah, hang on, what was he talking about? Tribe and talent, I think. Hang on a second. Yeah, tribe and so tribe again. You're in a certain tribe. Tribe and the masculine imperative is to I tribe and taste. Sorry. So so tribe is like you know men have a thing to compete but they also have the thing to cooperate so there's there's these two sort of tugs uh we also want to cooperate but we also want to compete uh, and within that tribe so there are tribal things that we will wear to signify that taste is obviously your own internal uh kind of what you want to wear and it sometimes goes at odd with the tribe and some and so you have to sort of balance that up um I mean, um, he, he also talked about, you know, dressing well as being a skill to learn. So he talks about you can become a good cook, but to become a great chef, great chefs have to be open to failure. And he said that perhaps this is why men don't dress that much, because in anything else, when you have failures, they'll be secret. But dressing well as, as or, you know, becoming a great dresser means that you're going to have those things out on show in public when you fail and that's what great chefs or great cooks no great great dressers will 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 not be afraid to do which means you've got to go through your red trousers phase or something anyway um basically he's saying that there's a point at the end is that the commitment most effective in changing a person's self-image and future behavior should be something that's active public and effortless so that applies to dressing um okay so Overall, what did I think of this book? It was an interesting book. Uh, it started off with some good, made, did make you think about how you dressed, I suppose, um, in that it's a strategy to achieve whatever it is you want. Um, he did have a great good case study in Conor McGregor, the MMA fighter, and that he said as he was going up the ranks, the way he dressed became more flamboyant. He wore these big sheepskin things, and he was saying this is signifying that he was a cut above the rest and everything. I understand that, but then Conor McGregor also had skills that he could pull off and he was 
pretty good in the ring. So it's, I'm not quite sure. It, basically what he's saying is that clothes will signify something, but you have to have the talent behind it also. So they will not, they cannot do the whole thing for you. You cannot dress and bluff your way through something. Although I have a friend who uh, tells me that, you know, he goes to a business deal and gets an expense, make sure he takes an expensive car and that what a difference it makes to the deal um, because people treat him differently. So I think there's something to be said about that. There's definitely a communication. It's definitely a book that if you read it, you'll maybe look at some of the ideas uh, and think differently. Um, me, uh, will it change the way I dress? No, absolutely not. I think, you know, uh, you can go overboard with these things. And uh, so I will be dressing exactly the way I always have. Very understated. Hope you enjoyed that. See you soon.